Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now tonight's pattern is another one in the Great Smoky Mountain series. It's called a Jack Cabe Hopper. Now to me, it looks more like a caddis pattern or a stonefly than a hopper, but Jack Cabe is a legend in Western North Carolina. He calls it a hopper, so I'm gonna call it a hopper. Now it's not a very difficult fly to tie. It does have one component you might not be familiar with or you might not have used before, mole hair. Now if you haven't used mole hair before and you get a chance to, I would recommend it. It's some really cool stuff and it has a good look to it on the fly. If you don't have mole hair, just use rabbit. Just use some brown or tan rabbit. Mix in a few guard hairs to make it buggier, but it'll work. So again, this fly is not too hard to tie. It's a pretty cool looking pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise. I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a dry fly hook, 1X long. Common size for this are actually a 10 down to a 16. Black thread. I am using 70 denier UTC. I'll lay a base down all the way to the bend of the hook. All right, let's get this tail tied in. Now it's red. Red saddle hackle fibers, or just a strong neck hackle, whatever you got. Just take a good sized clump of them, a little bit longer than a hook gap. Couple wraps, check your position. Okay, I think that looks fine. I'm good with that. Go ahead and secure this in close to the hook or cut it off, whatever's your preference. Okay, now this is the fun part. Mole hair dubbing. I mentioned this already. A lot of people probably don't have mole hair, but if you have a chance to get some and tie with it, it's really pretty cool. Right there, it's really thin. I mean, this is these fibers here are probably a sixteenth of an inch long. If you don't have this, just use your rabbit. Um, it's it's not hard to dub on, but you just take a a couple of pinches and then we'll just touch dub it on up here. It'll probably take three applications to get all the way up to the, you know, the front of the hook where we want it to be. Now when you're happy with that, see doesn't that look pretty cool? It looks a little bit different from rabbit, but I think it looks pretty cool. So when you're happy with that, let's next tie in our wing. It's gonna be a calf tail, either a white or a light tan. Now it's not gonna take much, but you will wanna put it in your stacker. And calf tail doesn't stack that great, but it stacks a little bit in a hair stacker, it looks a little bit better than not. Now you'll want this trude style wing almost as long as your tail here. So let's go ahead and catch this in on top. Do a pinch wrap right there. Couple more wraps. Put a few looser wraps right here just to keep it lined on top. Now I can go back up here with a couple of tighter securing wraps. Now let's cut this excess off. At a slight angle if you can, it will make the taper look just a little bit better. Let's go ahead and bury these in before we catch in our hackle. So we got a little bit of a ramp right there. That's gonna look fine. Now like many Smoky Mountain patterns, it's a brown and a grizzly dry fly rooster hackle here. I'm gonna tie both of these in. I've got them laying the same way. against each other. Let's go ahead and tie them in both at the same time. Leave a little bit of stem showing for that first wrap. And we're going to start wrapping it right back there where the calf tail is. So a few more securing wraps and we can go ahead and snip these off. The butt ends here. And we'll smooth that out as we take it back up to the head. 
Okay, it doesn't really matter which one you wrap first. I would just wrap whichever one is in the front. Grab your hackle pliers if you need. I've got about three inches or so of this feather, so I'm not going to need it. And about four wraps if you can get it of each, three or four of each, will get a nice bushy looking hackled fly. So let's take a couple of wraps to secure this one. We'll go ahead and trim this excess before we wrap our brown one. Okay, and I'm going to start this brown one just right behind that grizzly. And then kind of zigzag it up through there so we don't trap too many of the grizzly fibers on our way up. And I haven't been counting. I think that's probably three right there and that's about all I want. So let's go ahead two wraps to catch this one in. Snip this excess brown off. Now let's try and clean up this head. Now if you have a hair packer, one of these little tools right here, sometimes it makes it easier. Just grab it and then you can put a couple wraps right there, but I'm not that good with that thing. So I find it's usually just about as easy for me to use my big sausage fingers here. Just want to be careful that you don't go so far back that you cause these fibers to lay flat. You still kind of want them to be perpendicular to the hook if you can make it so. But I think we got enough room right there for about a four turn whip finish. Let's see if we can get this whip finish in without trapping any more of these fibers. Might have to just zigzag it a little bit. Oh, that was a three turn. Let's do a, another three turn right here. Okay, I think that worked and we've still got enough room for a small drop of head cement. So there you go, the Jack Cabe Hopper. Another classic Great Smoky Mountain fly pattern. I appreciate you watching, folks, and we'll see you next time.